Not too long ago, Lauren Boebert claimed she's so, quote, tired of hearing about the separation of church and state because that's not in the Constitution. In fact, the separation of church and state is a term that just came from a letter from one of the founders, but it's not actually in the Constitution. Now, in order to debunk what she's saying, all you have to do is open up the Constitution and read the very First Amendment, where it says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It doesn't say the words separation of church and state, but functionally, that's what that amendment does. It creates a firewall between church and state. And this is deeply rooted in our nation's history, to borrow a line from Alito in the Dobbs case, right? So you can claim that there's no separation of church and state because the Constitution doesn't literally say there must be separation of church and state. But all throughout the U.S. legal history, that's the way that that has been interpreted, rightfully so. But here... She's going to say, if there really is a separation of church and state, like they believe, then what is Ilhan doing with her hijab on? Why is she able to go in there with that? And see, this right here, we're going to watch the video, but this right here is a proof that when they say religious liberty, they do not mean liberty for all religious people. They mean Christians having religious liberty. If you're Jewish, if you're Muslim, they don't care. Now, the reason why we can still have the separation of church and state, even if Ilhan Omar wears a hijab, is because wearing a hijab does not mean that you are going to create legislation based on your religion. She has her personal religious belief, which the First Amendment allows her to have, but she's not trying to impose her religious views on everyone else. She's not trying to say this portion of the Quran should be reflected in this statute. So I feel like this is a very, very simple concept that even children would be able to grasp. But to her, just the mere presence of separation of church and state means that we can't have Muslims? Okay, but they're not the ones imposing their religion on people in America. You guys are. The Christo-fascists are the ones imposing their religion. But let's listen. Democrats um, ignorantly say this is in the Constitution, separation of church and state. Okay, I already have to pause it after two seconds. Ignorantly say, read the fucking Constitution, lady. You've just got to open it up. It's the first one. <laughs> the First Amendment. Just, just open it up. I dare you. Read it. And they don't know what it means. Um, and they think that that means you can't talk about God. Well, if they're really... No, 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 no. no. That's not what we say that means. That's a straw man argument. You can talk about God. You can join your little Christian cult, drink the Kool-Aid, do whatever the fuck you weird people do. That's fine. But what you cannot do is say, I am going to make my religion the law of the land. I'm going to uh, produce legislation uh, that is going to force people to abide by my religious principles. That's what that is. You can talk about God all you want. It's really fucking annoying, and you do, right? But you cannot say, well, because my religion dictates that abortion bad, you can't have an abortion. You can't say, well, my, because my religion dictates uh, gay people bad, that, uh, you know, you can't then make that a reflection of law or society. That's what the separation of church and state is separation of church and state like they believe it means well then what is ilhan doing with her with her hijab on i mean what hijab uh <laughs> checkmate libs you say that we have separation of church and state but yet ilhan omar wears a hijab okay let me know when ilhan omar starts introducing legislation that forces everyone to live by the principles of her religion. She's not doing that. Ilhan Omar might be personally religious, but she is publicly secular. She governs as a secular lawmaker because she, unlike you, Lauren, is actually following the Constitution. You're not supposed to be able to impose your religion on everyone. And, and let me just say this. The separation of church and state overall, that doesn't just protect atheists and secular people that protects religion as well if there was a state religion and a state church who you had to pay taxes to um well if you were a christian and that was a catholic institution then isn't that in conflict with your religion so 
Separation of church and state doesn't just protect secular people. It protects all religious people who want to have the freedom to exercise their own religion. That's the whole point. Okay, speaking of Christo-fascists. So I haven't seen the video yet, but um, Brandon Bradford writes, this starts off pretty standard and gets really insane. Sacrilegious and completely on brand for the religious right if you filter their comments and actions through this lens. Reactionaries like JBP included, they make way more sense. So, um... If this doesn't scare you, I don't know what will Christ the fascist indoctrination ceremony. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure where this is from, so we'll have to look for the context, but let's just watch this video. All right, go ahead. All right, Dutch, lead us. So we'll read it together, okay? As a patriot of faith, I attest my allegiance first and foremost to the kingdom of God. By the way, real quick. Um, and the great... I'm not sure why this looks like it was filmed on a potato, but this is the only footage I think that somebody recorded their computer screen because they didn't have screen capture. So I apologize for the poor quality, but this is unfortunately all that we have. Secondly, I agree to be a watchman over our nation concerning its people and their rights for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Whereas we, the church, are God's governing body on the earth. Whereas we have been given legal power from heaven and now exercise our authority. Okay, that right there is horrifying. We've been given legal power from heaven and now exercise our authority. So these Christo-fascists, they follow a sect of Christianity that I believe is called Dominionism, where they believe that they have a legal mandate from God to essentially impose his law and rule over all of us. So because we don't follow the biblical law or biblical principles, God has given them permission essentially to crush us legally, culturally, and socially. And so this is part of their um, admission here. I just, you can't really see this because I'm blocking it, but you can scan the QR uh, code to get the prayer declaration. This is truly us living in modern times, folks, where fascists uh, have QR codes, if you want to say their fascist pledge. Whereas we are God's ambassadors and spokespeople over the earth, whereas through the power of God, we are the world influencers, whereas because of our covenant with God, we are equipped and delegated by Him to destroy Okay, pause right there and reflect on that. As I was saying, they believe that God has given them the authority to destroy enemies of God. Now, enemies of God are who they say. So this means LGBTQ plus people. This means anyone who doesn't necessarily agree with them. People who, um, you know, um, have sex before marriage potentially. Okay, so make no mistake about it. They want a theocracy, and they believe that God has granted them the authority to rule in a theocratic authoritarian manner. They literally want the Christian equivalent of Saudi Arabia, where it's biblical law that dictates public law and civil law. It is horrifying because unfortunately, these people are emboldened, and this mindset is on the Supreme Court. They have a 6-3 to three majority. That's, that's pretty fucking frightening. This is the most mobilized and motivated portion of the electorate. We declare that we stand against wokeness, the occult, and every evil attempt against our nation. So now, notice that they're conflating wokeness with the occult. We declare and we now take back our God-given freedoms according to our Constitution. We declare that we take back influence at the local level in our communities. We declare 
Now, just to give you some context, the Seven Mountains is a reference to, like, different control points, I believe, of society. One of those Seven Mountains is the government. So, in order to reclaim God's kingdom, you've got to control all Seven Mountains. Government is one of the Seven Mountains. Um, I don't know what the other ones are, but I know that government is one of them, and that's what they're really, really uh, fixated on. So, this is a cult. You hear them all chanting in unison, like, this is cult shit. And it's not just a cult that's contained to their own little community. This is a cult that wants to force all of us to abide by their cult forcefully, by violent means, if necessary. That's literally what they want. That's literally what they believe God has granted them the authority to do. So if you don't agree, too fucking bad. Okay, uh, Joe Spinner has the seven mountains. Education, religion, family, business. Number five is government and, mil and military. Six is the arts and entertainment. Seven is media. So these are the seven mountains. And so um, take back permanently control. Now, if you say we're going to take back and permanently control, the implication of that is controlled by authoritarian means. To permanently control means you don't allow for, for pluralism. You don't allow for democracy. You don't allow for oppositional voices. You just rule by God's authority. No need to have an election because God already voted. God voted for you, crazy people. I just got to point out that it's like a theocratic pledge, but at the same time, they sprinkle in right-wing talking points. Like, we declare that America is energy independent and wokeness in the occult must be defeated. It's so strange and unhinged. don't that's dystopian so if you're feeling black pilled after watching that just know that the reason why they're doing that is because of this as pacific standard reports gen z is the least religious generation so how do you save religion when people are moving away from it easy you force people genuinely unhinged and horrifying I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Come.